So good morning and thank you for joining us. I'm Scott Moffat. I'm the Executive Director of BioNova, the industry organization leading the advancement of the health and life sciences in Nova Scotia. BioNova is pleased to host this virtual event along with our regional partners, BioNV and PEI BioAlliance, and provide a platform <coughs> for our national partners, BioTalent Canada, to present the details of their student work placement program that's been recently extended to the healthcare industry. If you are in attendance and representing a health and life sciences company, this program is also available to you. <laughs> Excuse me. I would also like to mention that at the end of this session, BioTown Canada will be doing a Q&A, but if you have a question during the, the session, you can ask it in the Zoom chat feature. As we have BioTalent Canada staff who are on hand to answer questions live. <coughs> Excuse me. I would now like to welcome our main presenter, Rob Henderson, President and CEO of BioTalent Canada, who will share more about the Student Work Placement Program. He'll be presenting in both English and French uh, for those of you uh, in attendance. And Rob, I'm gonna make you host now so that you can share your screen if needed. Okay, thank you, Scott. I'll see if I can get that done first. And we should be able to go. There we go, I think we're good. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Scott, thank you very much for inviting me to, to present to everybody. Uh, bonjour à tous. Uh, je, mon présentation uh, aujourd'hui sera uh, dans la majorité uh, en anglais, mais les questions peuvent peut être posées en, dans les deux langues officielles. Et je veux dire que mes collègues sont présents pour répondre aux questions uh, pendant la présentation, ou nous pouvons répondre aux questions uh, après la présentation aussi, um, par audio et vidéo. Um, I wanted to uh, thank uh, Scott from um, BioNova as well as BioNB and PEI BioAlliance for inviting me today. Um, the presentation will be mainly in English. However, uh, translation of the presentation itself um, will be available uh, after the fact. And uh, as I mentioned in the outset, the, uh, the uh, questions can be posed in uh, whatever language. As a national organization, we're completely, bi uh, completely bilingual and we have uh, we, my colleagues uh, both online today and uh, that you can contact after the fact uh, can serve you in either official language. So let's talk a little bit about uh, what we're talking about today. We're talking about, um, especially during COVID, <clears throat> we're talking about um, providing talent um, and HR best practices to biotech companies uh, across Canada, particularly in Atlantic Canada. But what were we really talking about? We're talking about biotech and HR, and as I've said in many times in presentations, if we talk about job descriptions and skills profiles and wage subsidies and everything, it can get a little dry. So what we really need to talk about is we're talking about people, largely. And when we're talking about people, I'm going to go forward for a moment here. We're talking about young people. Um, this young lady is Mina Huang. Uh, Mina was the winner of the 2019 Catalyst, Catalyst Award for Top New Biotech Hire. And she was part of the student work placement program. She got a wage subsidy right out of uh, UBC, University of British Columbia, to work for stem cell technologies uh, that is on the West Coast. And for those of you who are aware of stem cell technologies, it's one of the largest biotech companies in Canada. It's in 14 different countries, um, more than 3,000 employees. So Mina had an opportunity through a wage subsidy to um, do a work placement, a work integrated learning placement at stem cell technologies. And she distinguished herself so well that two things happened. Number one, um, she was immediately hired uh, full-time by stem cell technologies upon her graduation, which she was very gratified for because she had already adopted the culture. Um, but second of all, she was nominated for this 2019 uh, Catalyst Award um, for top new hire because the contribution that she had made to the company was so distinguished and so recognized. Um, that they wanted her to uh, be recognized individually for this contribution. This is the kind of thing that we do at Biotalent Canada every day, and we want to do it for companies across Canada, and that is facilitate onboarding of young, vibrant, energetic 
talent. Um, because if there's one thing uh, that the bioeconomy, it's not just about science, it's about people. So that's what we're going to be talking about a little bit today. And we'll be talking about some of the nuts and bolts on how you, um, through some of our programs, can onboard fresh, vibrant, new talent. So we're going to talk a little bit about Biotalent Canada. I'll give you a little bit of an introduction to ourselves. We'll talk about some wage subsidies. Um, besides the student work placement program, we have a few other wage subsidies for um, graduates, um, young people who have graduated and youth. Um, so we'll talk about a little bit about that. We'll talk about eligibility, eligibility requirements, both from uh, the employer perspective, as well as the employee perspective, the criteria they, by which they can qualify. And some of the uh, updates and the um, uh, changes to the program because that the federal government has implemented in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, many of these uh, changes have been in response to the economic stimulus package and the economic recovery program uh, that the federal government has instituted. And uh, as a result, they brought the wage subsidies in line with all of that. So let's talk a little bit about Biotalent Canada. We're a national nonprofit association. Um, we are uh, volunteer driven through a volunteer board of directors. Uh, we have uh, uh, volunteer board members uh, representing uh, almost all provinces. Certainly we have uh, a Nova Scotia rep and a PEI rep on our board. And our vision is really the Canadian bioeconomy, that the Canadian bioeconomy would be people focused, a career of choice and a driver of the Canadian economy. Now notice what we put there, the three key statements there is people focused, a career of choice and a driver of the Canadian economy. Um, because many of the small and medium sized enterprises um, make up the majority of the companies within the bioeconomy, it's difficult for scientists, many of the scientists that run them to be people focused. Our programs and our services and our products are best of class in human resources. And what we're trying to do is extend best practices to those small and medium sized enterprises, not just our wage subsidies, but things like a national biotechnology job board, compensation guides, uh, training programs, et cetera, that can help uh, SMEs staff up and improve their HR culture to such an extent that they can be a career of choice and um, attract and retain uh, the best of the best within uh, the Canadian, uh, the Canadian uh, labor market. So let's go on and talk a little bit about what we do. Like keeping with good science, what we try to do is at our heart, we're a labor market research organization. And what we do is we try to uh, do surveys, do research in order to identify and quantify skills gaps across the country within the bioeconomy. Why do we do that? Because obviously all, if you take, a, take a, into account uh, the entire lexicon of all the skills um, that are required to work in the bioeconomy, you've got a plethora. And um, not all of them are, um, uh, not all of them require upskilling, require training. Um, our post-secondary institutions, in fact, are quite uh, proficient, second to none in the world, of uh, teaching the theory of science. However, sometimes they struggle with teaching the business of science. And that's where we come in. That's where we come in with some of the employers that we count amongst our partners to um, qualify and quantify the skills gaps that exist between young people and newcomers, uh, all sorts of different labor markets, and the um, what is required. Um, what these companies require in terms of the skills to make a substantive contribution to their company. So we do professional, professional development. Um, after uh, identifying and quantifying those skills gaps across the country, we do professional development. We develop national standards. We're in the midst of a project right now where we're, where we're um, uh, developing national occupational standards. And then talent management, things like job boards, things like compensation guides, as I mentioned, uh, to help organizations manage their talent and make sure that their uh, internal systems uh, remain competitive. Um, and then we go all about, about it again and we continue to measure um, because labor market standards and labor market uh, requirements for the bioeconomy change constantly. And certainly that's no, uh, that's no difference. It's, it's truer than ever right in this age of a pandemic. So that's essentially what we do. I already mentioned about uh, Mina and many of the people that we've, uh, we've helped along the way, literally thousands of people that we've placed in wage subsidy positions across Canada to help companies grow. So let's talk a little bit about the impact of SWIP. This is a quote from Helen Sheridan, our senior, uh, senior vice president of human resources from stem cell technologies. 
shows a little bit of exactly uh, the kind of impact that students and young people and fresh, vibrant talent like Mina can make uh, within a company. So when we're talking about the bioeconomy in terms of the companies that we help, um, Biotalent Canada essentially takes a very inclusive um, uh, definition of the bioeconomy. Um, of, and we, we uh, subdivide it into really four subsectors. Biohealth, which is essentially the elephant in the room. The biohealth sector, which is commonly known as life sciences, is the sector that employs probably, the, uh, probably 80, upwards of 80 or 85% of all the people within the biotech sector in Canada. It includes things like medical devices, medical cannabis, nutraceuticals, et cetera. And then there are three other uh, subsectors which we serve and count amongst uh, within our labor market surveys and our, and our uh, HR products and services. And that's the vibrant uh, sectors, uh, subsectors of bioenergy, bioindustrial, and agrobiotech, all of which are represented in Atlantic Canada and uh, continue to grow uh, despite uh, COVID and many other setbacks. So this is to show uh, that we really do take a very inclusive uh, definition of the bioeconomy across, across Canada. Um, in terms of the companies that we help. So let's move on. Now, how we work, uh, Biotalent Canada over the last years has amassed a partnership program of about 65 different companies. That is everything from industry associations like PEI BioAlliance and BioNova and BioNV to um, some of the fastest growing um, uh, employers across Canada, those are showcase employers and some that of which are in Atlantic Canada, like BioVetra and IMV. Um, these companies uh, have joined with us because they see human resources as a, as a strategic objective to ob obtaining their business plans. As a result, they want to be in touch with BioTalent Canada to ensure that they are aware of the industry trends, things on the horizon, and um, new innovations within HR and training uh, that they can implement internally. Along with all of these companies and all of these organizations, we have everything from different healthcare suppliers, even municipalities, such as the municipality of um, uh, Mississauga, uh, universities across the country, all of whom band together with us to uh, form this very large partnership network. And in fact, it's the largest, uh, the largest network of bioeconomy companies uh, that is available in Canada our reach through these industry associations and all of these companies allows us to uh, contact at any given time hundreds if not thousands of biotech companies across the country. Uh, it's an unparalleled kind of reach and it's certainly what has made us successful in terms of uh, program implementation such as wage subsidies. Included in these 65 companies are uh, more than two dozen academic partners across Canada. Now as I mentioned in terms of our academic partners, um, these, co uh, these companies uh, actively uh, participated in work integrated learning programs, co-ops, internships, les stage, um, all of these things across, uh, across Canada. And why they do it is because they recognize that there is a skills gap um, between almost all of our post-secondary institutions and um, the uh, biotech employers in terms of the skills that students will require to make a substantial contribution to these companies. So work integrated learning, the programs through cooperative education and career education centers across with all of these institutions, strives to bridge that gap. And they work actively with Biotalent Canada and with, as I mentioned, the showcase employers and some of the fastest growing uh, biotech employers across Canada to try to highlight those skills and in training programs so that Biotalent Canada can, um, can, um, um, implement, uh, oh, excuse me, I'm going to admit everybody who's waiting in the waiting room. I'm sorry, I just got a notice. Do I have to do that? Alrighty then. Um, as I was in charge of this, the thing I didn't realize I was in charge of the waiting room. So there we go. Um, and um, to bridge the gap between what these uh, schools teach and what the employers require. So that is where Biotalent Canada came in, in um, essentially the student work placement program and into work integrated learning. So let's continue here. We're gonna talk a little bit about wage subsidies. These are programs that Biotelling Canada, we've literally been in the wage subsidy uh, business for about 15 years. And wage subsidies have been um, a key way for us to work with the federal government to address a particular problem 
within the biotech sector in terms of uh, labor market information. And that is youth unemployment. There have been so many young people, uh, a very large uh, component, a percentage across Canada, that have a real difficult, uh, difficulty in finding jobs um, in the biotech sector upon graduation. Now, partly is because one of the biggest things the, the small and medium-sized enterprises requires access to capital but also because there's a skills gap and it's, it's very costly for these small and medium sized enterprise, enterprises to train and upskill these people, these young people who are coming right out of college and university to um, make up, as I mentioned, a substantial uh, difference in contribution uh, to the biotech companies. So the wage subsidies try to br bridge that gap. And what they do is they give access to much needed capital to these companies and um, um, much needed talent. Um, and that's where a lot of these have come. So they're broken down in two categories. One is um, new graduates or youth wage subsidies, which is post, uh, 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 after graduating from college or university programs. And then there's the student work placement program, which is for students who are active students, actual students right now. So let's go into them a little bit. So the first one that we're talking about here is Science Horizons. Science Horizons is a program that we have been running for Environment and Climate Change Canada, the Federal Department of Environment and Climate Change Canada. Um, and it provides up to $15,000 for STEM grads. Um, the great thing about this program is you don't necessarily have to be, um, uh, sorry, you have to be a STEM graduate of a program in college and university for Science Horizons. The second program under specifically STEM programs is the Science and Technology Internship Program, or STEP which is a wage subsidy program that we run out of funds from Natural Resources Canada or NRCAN. This uh, program pro provides up to $22,500 um, and possibly even more for remote employees for green jobs. And these students in the science and tech internship program don't necessarily have to be graduates. They just have to be young people. The definition, federal definition of young people is less than 31 years old. So these two programs, Science Horizons and STEP, uh, particularly target STEM jobs, and that is in sustainable te development technology jobs or companies for either young graduates in the case of Science Horizons or just youth uh, under the age of 31. So these are students. Uh, we also provide students up to um, $7,500 for healthcare and bioscience. Employees uh, to hire STEM, business and healthcare, or other students through the student work placement program. So we're going to go through these in, uh, in detail. Those are the three categories of wage subsidies that we currently provide. So Science Horizons. We currently are, are, um, are placing up to 50 grads in environmental STEM jobs. This is $15,000, it's a subsidy. It's, it pays the employer on a one-to-one -one basis. It matches dollar for dollar up to $15,000 for the first six months of the placement, of the employment placement. And this is for youth under 31 years old, and the deadline is October 30th, 2020 for this program because it's up to six months, it goes to the end of the current fiscal year. Tous les matériaux que je, que je présente aujourd'hui, tous les matériaux, tous les documents et um, uh, tous vos questions peuvent, peuvent être posés en uh, les deux langues officielles et sur, tout le contenu sur le site web sont disponibles et, uh, en, en, entre les deux langues. So all of the materials are available in both official languages on biotalent.ca, which is our website. So next one, the Science and Tech Internship Program. This is green jobs. These are for sustainable development or um, uh, um, sustainable development oriented jobs. These are, are placing 50 youth in natural resource STEM jobs linked to the green economy. Now, this is new. They've now created the fact that 75% of the wages for six months, up to $22,500, can now be placed, can now be provided for this wage subsidy program. This is new in light of COVID. Um, the federal government has upped the wage subsidy to promote um, employment and to, uh, to uh, help match uh, some of the uh, wage subsidy programs to the already existing uh, CUES, which is the Canadian Emergency Wage Subsidy, um, which was the measure that the federal government instituted in the light of COVID-19, which was a general wage subsidy. What they've done is they've, they've um, amended some of these wage subsidy programs to increase the amount of subsidy that's available to employers. So this is up to 75% of wages for six months. Youth, youth furthest from employment, in other words, away from urban centers, 
uh, or in more remote areas can be eligible to up to $30,000. These are all youth under 31 years old and the deadline is September 30th, 2020. Now, we are awaiting word from the federal government as to whether that deadline can be extended. Um, so we are hopeful that it will be, because uh, otherwise I, I understand that only gives everybody three days to, uh, to apply for this program. Uh, but stay tuned and you can see on our website if there's gonna be some updates that this is going to be extended. So next, let's talk about the Student Work Placement Program. The Student Work Placement Program is by far the largest program that we've ever done um, for uh, BioTalent Canada. We are placing 2,900 students um, in bioscience and healthcare positions. Uh, these are work placement positions. So these are co-ops, internships, stages for college and, and uh, university students. We will supply up to 75% of wages, up to $7,500 subsidy to hire post-secondary students. This program connects the employer students and post-secondary institutions all together. So we work primarily through the co-op and career education centers because it's their job to uh, recruit employers to take on these co-ops and internships and these stages uh, with students in college and universities. The whole point of it is unlike um, our wage subsidies that are for uh, unemployed young people. These programs increase, increase student job readiness while the students, while the young people are still in the programs through these work integrated learning opportunities. And again, all of the information on all of this is on our website. So let's talk a little bit about the student work placement program eligibility, employer eligibility requirements. These have to be this has, they have to provide full or part-time employment up to 16 weeks. And yes, there are times that these, um, these uh, placements can be repeated. So if there's one placement for 16 weeks, it can be repeated and the student, uh, another student work placement wage subsidy could be eligible. These are bioeconomy or healthcare employer and or job function. So in other words, it could be a biotech employer, it can be a healthcare employer or a biotech or healthcare function within an employer, if you understand. Wages cannot be combined with another federal government program. So this provides $7,500 on a one-to-one -one matching uh, basis with the employer for each placement. However, the amount that the employer uh, allows or the employer contributes cannot come from another federal source, such as IRAP, MITAX, NSERC, or many of the traditional wage subsidy programs uh, that currently exist and um, uh, that are essentially analogous to a lot of what Biotelling Canada's uh, wage subsidy programs are. They can be combined with municipal or provincial grants, and, um, but not federal. And the student must be an active employee of the company for, the, for whom the company takes responsibility and on the employer's payroll. Um, so these are the employer eligibility requirements for the student work placement program. For the student, the student must be an active current registered full or part-time post-secondary student in an accredited college or university in Canada. Uh, the student must be a Canadian citizen, permanent resident or refugee, or have, per, or have permanent resident or refugee status uh, within Canada. Um, no, we, the programs currently do not allow for foreign students um, to participate in the wage subsidy programs. Um, that's unfortunate, but at the same time, it's an eligibility requirement that, that the federal government has not changed. And then finally, um, because the employee must be registered, not only a registered student, uh, but also an employee, uh, a registered employee of the company, the student must be able to legally work in Canada. Uh, that's, I would think, obvious. Next. These are COVID-19 updates. In other words, these are the changes to the student work placement program. We call it SWIP, S-W-P-P, that have been instituted by the federal government in response to the pandemic. Before the pandemic, before COVID-19, there was a net new baseline of students that companies had to have. So in other words, if a company, this program was to create new um, and enhanced uh, number of student work placement programs within employers. So that meant that these employers had to report an, a baseline uh, by which we, they grew. So for example, if they hired 10 co-op students or had 10 co-op placements last year in the, um, in the company, we would ask how many new ones are you gonna be adding to that? So if you take away the first 10 that they're going to repeat this year, 
they would say, well, we're going to be hiring five new, five additional. We would say, great, those five are eligible for the student work placement program. That net new or baseline is eliminated. In other words, any of the co-op um, placements that a company is currently hiring, including uh, a repeat of the, of the co-ops that they did the, from the previous year, are now eligible for SWIFT funding. This was done in light of COVID-19, in light of, light of the economic down, downturn, to make sure that companies had access to fun, funds and that these co-ops would continue, <clears throat> funded by uh, programs like the Student Work Placement Program. The, um, the program used to be one-to-one -one matching of 50%, and that subsidy has now been increased to 75%. Since May 25th, 2020, any placement, and it can be backdated to May 25th, 2020, is eligible up to 75%. So it's not one-to-one -one matching now, it's three to one. We can now pre-approve employers and jobs so that <clears throat> companies who are here today who are planning on hiring uh, uh, co-op students or internships in the future, can send those applications or send those uh, job descriptions um, to BioTalent Canada and we can say yes, you as an employer and this job, um, so long as the student is eligible, would qualify for a student work placement program wage subsidy. And 75% uh, also a new thing under COVID, we can um, um, give a cash advance to assist with cash flow of up to 75% for um, <clears throat> small and medium sized enterprises. Those are companies who have less than 500 employees and students can work from home. Um, before they had to be supervised by an on-site supervisor, but now they can work from home. Polk, uh, and an exciting new development is that post-secondary institutions can hire their own students. Uh, this was a very good development and it really helped keep the co-op um, uh, placements flowing because many colleges and universities uh, were prevented from accessing these funds for their own research. Um, and now uh, that, um, that barrier has been uh, lifted by the federal government. And then of course we have flexible start dates. <clears throat> These jobs could be backdated ever all, all the way for, to May 25th, 2020. And of course they can start at any time, <clears throat> whether it's September, <clears throat> January or April, the traditional co-op um, uh, seasons. So next, a little bit more of an impact story of SWIP. Um, Jenna um, was a student work placement program uh, placement in uh, Clean Slate UV, who was the winner of the 2020. Um, uh, Catalyst Award uh, for Best New Hire. And um, the Chief Technology Officer at Clean Slate UV had this quote to say, and that's that Jenna took the time to understand our vision, mission, values, and because of this and her work ethic, she completed a project that had a measurable impact on the success of Clean Slate UV, which was a sustainable development component uh, 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 company um, in, um, in Ontario who won the Catalyst Award last year, or excuse me, this year for a uh, placement that occurred, uh, that occurred last year. So this goes again to show some of the impact that these placements and these young people are having on these small and medium sized enterprise, uh, the SME biotech companies across Canada. Questions, these are two of our uh, resident experts, Colleen Hayes, who is an outreach officer for, uh, with BioTalent Canada, and Mary Carr, who's the project manager of our wage subsidy programs. Um, they are available to you, um, they are bilingual, They'll be able to help you uh, and um, uh, are looking forward to, uh, uh, to hearing from you, whether by email or by phone. Um, something that you should know is we really, as I've gone through all of the criteria of this program and brought you through the exhaustive um, bullet points that you may, may uh, think you have to remember, you don't. If you're hiring, the simple message I have for you today is if you're hiring, call us. Call us, contact one of my colleagues here at BioTalent Canada. We will talk to you about your job, about your company, and we will, if we can, uh, fit you into one of the wage subsidy programs or the position into one of the wage subsidy programs we have, if it is eligible. Um, in the student work placement program, as I mentioned, we have 2,900 placements. We've already placed 1,400 people, um, uh, 1,400 placements. So we still have placements to go before next year. The programs go on right till March 31st. But um, uh, our, our expertise is truly in finding out and learning about your company, learning about the kind of uh, person or the kind of position you're trying to employ, and then helping you with it um, in terms of being able to place it. So with that, I want to thank you for your time today. I want to open it up to questions. I know we have a chat function here too. 
and I'm going to see if I can uh, take a look at that. If we go to the chat functions here. And yes, we have my colleagues Joanne and Kayla and Benita are on the job here answering questions within the chat. But uh, I'd like to open it up to you. Um, if any of you have any questions um, uh, on any of these programs at this point. Any questions? Some of you maybe have not muted your line. I see there was a few on the chat function which are being answered by my colleagues, which is great. If there are no questions, um, that's no problem. Um, I will assume that we've, uh, we've answered them with the presentation. Uh, but also, like I said, the real, uh, the real message here is that if you have any questions or if you are hiring, uh, please contact us because we would be glad to, uh, and, oh, here we go. Megan McLean to everyone. Thank you. So there is no job matching done at BioTalent Canada. Um, not for these job, uh, these jobs. However, what I can do, what we can do is we do have a biotechnology job board uh, that BioNB, P Bio, Bio Alliance, and BioNova members have access to with free postings on the Petri dish. So if you are a member of any of these industry associations, you can get a free job posting, including co-op uh, or internships or work integrated learning placement jobs. So while we do not match employer to talent, we can do two things. Number one, we can post the job for you uh, free of charge. Uh, on the Petri dish. And number two, we can make sure that we introduce, introduce you to post-secondary institutions uh, and their co-op and career education centers, um, especially the ones in Atlanta, Canada, and uh, so that they can match you with you as an employer with one of their students who would be eligible for one of our student work placement program wage subsidies. And I see uh, Benita and uh, uh, Joanna are answering this as we go. Uh, here we go. As a university rep, we can share info with employers and direct them to contact BioTalent Canada. Absolutely. Um, you should have access to all of this information. If you don't, um, we make sure we can give you to where you need to go. Um, and absolutely, we will ask, ask you to sh share it far and wide. Currently, we've enlisted the support of BioNB, uh, BioNova, and PEI BioAlliance to help um, spread the word about the Student Work Placement Program. They've done so. It's one of the reasons why this, well, it is the reason why this webinar is taking place. And um, they've done so um, very, very effectively. But yes, if you uh, find an employer uh, as a post-secondary institution um, that has not heard about the programs, yes, please uh, let them know all about it. Uh, let me see here now. Is it up to the student to tell the employer or vice versa, or is it both? Is it up to student to tell the employer or vice versa, or is it both? I'm not sure what that means, but at the time, um, the students can certainly let the employer know that they may be eligible for this wage subsidy. Um, uh, and the student may be in contact with either BioTalent Canada or the post-secondary institution in order to do that. Either the employer or the, or the uh, student can, uh, uh, can uh, spread the word on the program. However, it is the employer that has to apply to, uh, for the wage subsidy because it is the employer that receives the wage subsidy in order to pay the student. Bonjour, je ne suis pas certaine de bien comprendre. Ce n'est donc pas uniquement dans les maritimes, mais aussi disponible pour d'autres provinces. Oui, c'est un programme national, euh, notre programme de subvention pour les étudiants. Ce n'est pas se seulement dans le, le Canada atlantique et les maritimes. Euh, c'est disponible en Québec, Ontario et les, toutes les autres provinces. Il y a euh, plus que 2900 euh, postes qui sont disponibles pour des subventions euh, dans n'importe quel endroit du Canada. I hope that answered your question. It is a national program and is available all over the place. Um, we're concentrating a lot of our efforts through um, some of these, some of these um, webinars and promotional activities, especially in regions like Atlantic Canada, because we found some of the companies here a little bit less, a little bit more reticent to adopt national programs, to, to take subsidies or to, to participate in national programs. We sometimes think that some, they've been worried about um, red tape, or that there's a lot of um, uh, administrative work that makes it, uh, negates the reasons for taking the wage subsidy. Um, my team does the bulk of that for you. Um, we've found the turnaround time and the cash flow. The, we have a, a 90, a, a more than a 95% satisfaction rate with the companies that take these wage subsidies for us because we've become really good at it. 
we understand that at SMEs, you don't have time for these, um, for a lot of red tape and a lot of bureaucratic nonsense in order to access funds. So you will find my team, we'll get, turn around an application and let you know if it's eligible very quickly. Um, and we'll get you a check in advance funds as soon as possible to help with your cash flow. Um, it's one of the things that we do really, really well. Um, and um, we know because we understand the bioeconomy, we understand the companies um, that uh, they don't have time for this kind of bureaucratic nonsense and they require money and hiring, they require quick turnaround time so they don't lose the talent that they've got their eye on to hire. Um, thanks, I work at a PSI and it's a challenge for eligible students, non-co-op, to find positions. Yes, you're absolutely right. Um, and what we're trying to do is, I understand for students that are not in co-op to find positions, absolutely. So we're trying to encourage more and more students to take work integrated learning positions because they, the, the companies, uh, the chances of them being hired by a company after they finish the co-op goes up exponentially because the student already understands the company, it's part of their culture. And it's a great way for companies to weed out talent, weed out really good hires from potentially not so good. Vadid is answering some of the uh, questions here. Does the website refer to eligible positions available under healthcare? Yes, it does. Uh, not necessarily positions, but different companies. Everything from long-term care, um, pharmacies, um, physiotherapy clinics, uh, all sorts of different things, um, uh, um, uh, laboratory technicians, medical device companies, uh, they are listed uh, categorically what kinds of companies are, are available under healthcare. However, it's not necessarily just healthcare positions. These could, be, um, these could be marketing positions. These could be accounting positions in healthcare institutions or in healthcare companies. Um, all of these are eligible for a student work placement program. Um, so it's not necessarily just someone who is in a healthcare program in a college or institution, a college or university, or a biotech position. It can be support people as well. Will the Science Horizons program be extended to the other sectors? What wage subsidies are available to higher graduates outside of clean tech? So we are working, that's a great question. Thank you, Patricia Ryan. Um, the Science Horizons program comes from Environment and Climate Change Canada. So it is doubtful that they're gonna be extending that program to, uh, for example, health, uh, healthcare or life sciences. And that's because EEC is essentially dealing with climate change and wants to promote sust sustainable development. That's their mission. However, uh, the Youth Employment Strategies program of ESDC, we just recently completed a, a program there um, that was called Career Starter. It was a young graduate program uh, that was available to anybody in any sector in biotech, and it was a new, uh, for new graduates and underemployed youth. Um, we've been trying to work with the Youth Employment Strategies program to uh, repeat that program. Um, we have not gotten any um, uh, further note uh, of whether that is going to happen. But if you could contact your local MP, uh, federal MP, and let them know that BioTalent Canada's Youth Employment Strategies Program, Career Starter, requires more funding uh, because students require it in the higher times, that would be very, very useful. Um, if you need more information on that, contact me and I can help you help us to try to, to uh, kickstart that program. Um, is an employer required to have a specific student in mind in order to apply? Um, not necessarily, because you can be you can get pre-approval. So even while you're looking for a student, you can get pre-approval for that subsidy while you are looking for that position. So you might want to hire it in a month or two. So no problem. Uh, we can, as I mentioned, we can help you find that student either through our job board or getting you in touch with one of the post-secondary institutions. So yes, you can get pre-approval for that. Uh, list of healthcare roles uh, my colleague has put down there. Yes, we can pre-qualify. List of New Brunswick partners. Uh, we do not have, uh, we certainly can get you in touch with some of the post-secondary institutions, but our main partner in New Brunswick is BioNB, Jennifer Donnelly and her, uh, and her uh, crew uh, over there. Um, we have, uh, a, uh, they are essentially the conduit to both post-secondary institutions and employers there. So we can put you in touch with BioNB, who's helping sponsor today's web, uh, webinar. And then the partners are listed there, as you can see. Employer must provide full-time employment up to a maximum of 16 weeks. Are there any plans to allow part-time interns? Yes, part-time interns are, can be qualified depending on the nature of the internship. Um, so part-time and full-time up to 16 weeks. Um, if the employer must provide full-time employment, part-time is now uh, available uh, as well. 
um, as far as I know. Uh, or that may be part-time students, I'm not sure, but I can qualify that for, for sure. Part-term interns as part of the COVID-19 changes, yes. So thank you, Lena, to let us know that maybe our website's a little out of date and we'll make sure that that is uh, shifted. But part-time students, uh, part-time uh, postings are also available. Can be part-time as part of the new COVID-19. Psychology students do fall under healthcare and may find roles in that sector. They would be eligible for thank you for, for positions as well. For NB, yes, information contact Jen O'Donnell at jodonnell at bionb.org. And we work actively with BioNB. Uh, we do are in touch with certainly some of their post-secondary institutions there. Uh, my colleague Joanne, who is also on the line, has also been doing that. Um, and uh, between BioNB and us, I'm sure we can contact you with the right uh, person. Would be great if the part-time uh, could be extended to longer than 16 weeks. I'm not sure if the part-time stages can be stacked. Uh, I know the full-time ones can, uh, but we can certainly take a look at it. If you have a one in, in um, position, we can certainly take a look and see if ESTC, if that position would be eligible. So again, there are many unique characteristics and unique um, criteria that may be for your particular student or your particular company's situation. So uh, not every criteria that we have on our website will necessarily follow that. But you can contact us and we can make sure uh, through our pre-approval process, we can answer your question if, for example, as Lena asks, if they can reapply for a second 16-week term. We have had companies do that and they have been eligible. Um, it depends again on the nature of the position and the nature of your company. Uh, but certainly we can let you know that before the um, work integrated learning placement occurs. I think I've caught up actually to the, to the, uh, the chat now. So um, it's now about a quarter to 10. Um, I'm going to, uh, here we are, another one from Rona, sorry. I can help you connect with our co-op students from 24 different programs, uh, excellent students, and that's at Dalhousie uh, University. I see that, it's from, from Rona, ah, Rona from Dalhousie, yes. So just one of the one of the universities that we do work with. <clears throat> we work with every single college and university across Canada. Uh, there is not one every every single program is eligible uh, for the student work placement program, um, including obviously Dalhousie and any of the other Atlantic Canada colleges and universities. Um, all right. So I think I've caught up with the questions. I'll. Can you provide me with a recording of this presentation? I'm not sure if I can provide you with a recording. I'm not sure if we recorded the presentation. Uh, yes, uh, we you? are. Oh, we did, Scott. Excellent. Look at that. He thought way ahead of me. So absolutely, we can get you a recording of the presentation, and we can also provide you with a English or French version of the PowerPoint slides um, uh, as well. So let us know, and we can make sure that uh, uh, Scott and whoever else, uh, Scott, if it's you who has the, uh, the list of all of the registrants, we can certainly send the recording and the uh, both language versions of the PowerPoint out after the fact. Certainly. Great. So with that, um, uh, I will hand it over to you, Scott, uh, unless there are other questions at this point from uh, the audience.